Hello friends, this video on neat evolution is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us talk about the modern synthetic theory of evolution. So this theory is the synthesis of Darwin's and Hugo de Vries theories. Now since this theory is the modern most accepted theory of evolution, so as you all have um, learned that there were many different scientists with different views on evolution and they all came up with different laws and theories. Now the most accepted theory of organic evolution was the synthetic theory. Now, why do we call it synthetic theory? Because it was, this theory is a synthesis of multiple theories. Now, on one hand, we have Charles Darwin's theory, which says that all the variations are inherited. Doesn't matter small or big, all variations are passed on from one generation to the next. On the other hand, we have Hugo de Vries theory, which tells that only mutations are inherited and not the small variations. So only when you have a big major change due to the different genetic makeup, uh, so only then those mutations, those new changes get inherited to the next generations and not the small, small variations. Now, this theory, the synthetic theory is a mixture or a synthesis of these theories, Darwin's theories plus Hugo de Vries theories and that is why we named it synthetic theory of evolution. So this synthetic theory of evolution includes the following five factors. So what are those factors? The genetic variation in a population, isolation, heredity, natural selection and speciation. Now let us discuss about each of these factors in more detail. So first let's talk about the genetic variation in a population. Now what do we mean by genetic variation? Now let's say that you have a population. So any kind of variation in terms of genes like maybe some new genes getting introduced into that population or some genes are getting removed or getting lost from that population or there are some sudden changes some random changes in the genes of that population so any sort of genetic variation in a population can happen due to again due to multiple factors so one of the factors could be mutations so what are mutations? These are sudden heritable changes. So sudden changes which just happens uh, on its own and these sudden changes are sufficient to create genetic variation because you know why genetic variation because these sudden changes not only happens on its own but it also gets transmitted to the future generations. So one good example of mutation could be the uh, sickle cell anemia disease which is caused by a small defective gene. Now we often say like while we were learning about the Mendelian disorders and the inheritance of various diseases, we learned that in case of sickle cell anemia, so all of this happens because of a defective gene. So do you know how, what is that defective gene? What happens to that defective gene? So basically there is a substitution in the beta hemoglobin gene which alters a single amino acid in the protein produced because basically what are proteins? Proteins like you know, they make our body. Proteins are made up of amino acid. So the moment there is a slight change in one of the genes that alters an amino acid. So when, when one amino acid is altered, so basically the entire sequence of the protein that is formed that gets altered. So let us look at this picture to get a clearer idea. So let's say in case of normal so okay so in sickle cell anemia basically what happens the rbc's or the red blood cells which are normally round in shape they become in the shape of a sickle like sickle shape so as you see here this is sickle cell rbc and this is the normal round rbc now when the rbc's become sickle shaped what happens is it it sometimes becomes very difficult now when they are round in shape it's very convenient for them to travel throughout the body so that's the purpose of the rbc's the blood but when they are sickle shaped sometimes you know they kind of get stuck in between while moving from one place to another as a result that can give rise to blood clotting and many other complexities in the body so basically the main problem is that the rbc's become sickle shaped now why do they become sickle shaped so what are rbc's so these are the red blood cells 
So how are they formed? They are definitely formed by some proteins which in turn are made up of amino acids. So if you look at it, if in, in case of a normal person, if this is how the DNA looks like, I mean when I say DNA, this is just one part of the DNA. So in case of a mutant uh, person, that means a person inside whose gene mutations have taken place, that is sudden heritable changes have taken place. And what is that sudden heritable change? This is the change. So if you look at this, in, in the normal person, it was AT and in this person, it is TA. So, you know, there's a slight change in just one base pair. Now, this slight change, you see what it did to the RNA. So, if you look at the corresponding RNA, this is the corresponding RNA where you have GAG in middle, but in the mutant form, you have GUG in middle. So, as a result, the, the moment your codons have changed, obviously the amino acid will also change. So, here if it is GLU, here it is valin. So the amino acid have changed. Now when the amino acids changed, what happened? The shape of the RBCs also changed. So you see a very small change, a small mutation was good enough or capable enough to create a genetic variation. So amino acid sequence in part of the beta hemoglobin structure, this change alters the entire hemoglobin structure and therefore the shape of the RBCs are also changed. So mutations could be one factor for genetic variation in a population. Second factor could be gene flow. So what do we mean by gene flow? So obviously the name itself says that flow of genes from one population to another. So migration of individuals from one population to another leads to loss or gain of genes. So let us say that this is a population that you have. Let Okay, let's look at it like this. So let's say this is one population and this is another population that you have. Now, population one has some genes inside it. Population two has certain genes. Now, let's say due to migration of people from population one to population two, what would happen? Some genes are lost in population one because people are moving to population two. At the same time, some genes are getting added to population two. So this is what is called gene migration or gene flow whatever you call it so here if you see let's say all these white individuals they represent one population and what is that red individual maybe that person has migrated from another population so basically this gene got the red one is a gene they, the red one represents a gene which got added to this existing population so migration of individuals can also lead to genetic variation third is genetic drift so what is genetic drift? So drift refers to any random changes. So random changes in gene frequencies in a population. Now such random changes occur by chance. So these changes can be drastic enough again to form new species. Fourth factor could be hybridization. What is hybridization? Hybrid is always, it always refers to mixture of any two things. So hybridization is mixing genes of two populations. So let's say you have population one and population two. So you take genes from population one, you take some genes from population two and you mix both of them you kind of combine both of them so what do you get so the genes which you get they are new genes so basically what are these new genes so these new genes represent variations so you took some genes from one some from two and you mixed them together so the the new form which you found was a new gene which is a new variation and then again that can get uh, you know kind of inherited to the next generation so these are the four factors which can impact the genetic variation in a population now as far as genetic drift is concerned let us discuss more about it like how these random changes in gene frequencies happen what are the various ways in which it can happen so let us Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.